I've got a nice big double garage with small house attached. So in this series, we're going to be transforming this garage into the ultimate showroom, workshop, sort of studio. I mean, I don't know quite what to do. I'm really not sure what to do with the space. I could do with a bit of inspiration. Welcome to the final Garage Build episode. So there's about eight or so episodes of this series. This is the final reveal, the final walkthrough. Now it's all completed. So if you've been following this series along, you know I started this about six months ago. It was basically just a completely bare garage. But in this video, I'm basically gonna walk you through the final garage build, the things which have worked out really well as part of this build. Also the things which I may have done a little bit differently with hindsight. Hindsight's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Overall, I'm completely happy with how this has come out. Let me walk you through it all. So let's walk you through some of the features of the garage that you haven't seen in the other build series videos. So first of all, one of the massive things which has happened in here is this big uh, mural. It's called a mural. This was done by Glenn at Fast Signs Portsmouth. The same with this artwork he did for me. He's a subscriber. He watched the, uh, the first video in the series and said, when you're done, if you want any artwork on the walls, let me know. And uh, I thought, you know, what I'd really like, what was really letting it down was just a horrible big grey garage door. So I thought initially about just painting it and I thought, oh, what would be better than paint? Let's go for some sort of sticker on the garage door. And I contacted Glenn and said, look, Glenn, I really would like some sort of uh, sticker on the garage door. And he said, well, that won't work because the image will become sort of out of shape as it goes along. And I said, well, what about just printing it? on the outside, you know, not on the full picture, but just on, just on this, just on these inner pieces here, I suggested, just on these inner pieces and have like half a picture. Well, anyway, they came out and he said, we can actually do the inner and the outer piece. And when you put that together, it looks absolutely incredible. You know, obviously the more you're in front of it, the less the, uh, 
unless it sort of distorts the image, but it's absolutely amazing. It basically took them all day to do this from about 10 in the morning to about four in the evening. Um, one massive or two massive pieces. So one big image here and another big Im image at the bottom, which they stuck on and then cut it by hand once it was on the garage door. And the end result, I mean, the end result is just incredible. It's like a, you know, what a, a sort of centerpiece to the garage really. So uh, really, really happy about that. So if you need any signage, anything a little bit different out of the ordinary, I'll put Glenn's and Fast Signs Portsmouth contact details below. You know, give them a ring, send them an email, you know, because uh, what they've done here is just absolutely made, made the garage. Also, we've got a bit of security. We have a guardsman shed barrier. Now this basically goes across my door, which I have painted by the way, because it was horrible brown colour before, locks that end. So that's a bit of a barrier to stop people getting the bikes out. I've actually got a separate video coming on this and the garage defender, which they've also fitted. So there'll be a bit of a garage security video to follow up, but we've got a bit more security in here now. Why this garage has taken so long to finish is because of the Craftworks cupboards. Now I'm absolutely over the moon with these. I can't believe how they fit in. They just fit in there perfect. But they took four months to arrive. So, you know, they told me originally that they'd take three weeks to arrive. They took four months. The reason being, you know, COVID, manufacturing delays, shipping delays, blah de blah. But you know, that, that's what's delayed this whole project. But I have to say, I'm incredibly happy with the end results with these cupboards. I mean, you see, I wasn't able to get anything finished until I had the cupboard so I could put everything away. I thought to myself, what's the point in having a fantastic new garage if I'm just gonna be using my old shitty tools? So I actually bought myself some tools. So I mean, I've done a few jobs in the garage now. There's been some videos coming, me working on the H2, working on the Suzuki, but it's just fantastic to actually have new tools like this. So these are all the sockets. So you've got the uh, half inch driver, three quarter inch driver, quarter inch driver, and all of the uh, sockets to match. And also I've got the spanners, so the spanner drawer. Now this kit, I think, the spanners and the socket set were from Halfords. So these, these but they're actually Sealy. And I think it was about 400 quid for those in the sock, I think so. But I didn't leave it there. I also got some more of the Halfords professional stuff. So we've got um, Allen bolt drivers, obviously, and then you've got uh, hex wrenches and Torx wrenches as well. But that's not all. We've also got screwdriver set, uh, circlip pliers, normal pliers. And then in this one, I've basically got all my old tools, all my old sockets. Because um, even though these new ones are great, you haven't got absolutely everything. So I've got some of my other stuff kept in these. As you go down, the drawers get less and less tidy. <laughs> Here we have another selection of odds and sods. The idea being I'm going to fill these with bolts and, you know, useful things. That's all my ABBA stand, different uh, fitments for different bikes. So, you know, everything's in there eventually when I get that fully set up. And then the last drawer is where it gets completely messy. And this is where I keep my Ducati special tools, you know, uh, my chisels in here somewhere as well. Yeah, all my, all my Ducati special tools are in the, uh, in the bottom drawer. So incredible, 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 slightly more scruffy, getting a little bit more messy, pretty, pretty scruffy, absolutely terrible. In this drawer, I've got all of my GoPro stuff. So all of my adapters, all of my mounts, you know. So I thought I'm gonna have a whole drawer dedicated to, to GoPro fittings. So if I need a fitting, you know, I've got everything in here. <laughs> That's what doing YouTube and motor vlogging for 10 years does. You build up a bit of a collection. But that's not all. In this one, we have the other fittings and mounts, you know, selfie sticks or battens tripods, a lot of my ultimate add-on stuff in there as well. That one, yeah, that, that's, that's getting very scruffy now. I don't normally have my crash helmet rotating, <laughs> but I thought, why not? Why not? This is a garage reveal video. Let's get it on the Lazy Susan, or the Lazy Mavis, as I like to call it. Excuse me. Another little finishing touch I thought I'd go for was a bit of neon. 
bit of neon in the garage, so I had the lamb chops rides right, neon. You've got to have a bit of neon, haven't you? My my hundred thousand subscriber plaque has uh, pride of place Not deserved. on the wall there. So uh, yeah, that's been brilliant to get that up in the garage. What an achievement it's been to actually get that. Presented to Lamb Chops Rides for passing 100,000 subscribers. That's uh, thanks to you guys. As you can see, I'm midway through some work on the, on the Suzuki. There'll be a video coming of what I'm actually doing to this, but the actual bike lift has been a revelation. I'm used to working with the ABBA lift, which don't get me wrong, is brilliant, but it's a bit of a faff to get different adapters with different bikes to swap things over. But on here, you know, providing you don't need to remove wheels, because removing wheels I think, from this will be a pain, but just getting it up high so you can work on stuff, it's been absolutely a game changer, really. It's been amazing, that lift. So, you know, that's a Pro Bike EHS 500. One of the things I have noticed is, you know, when you work in here, it, it has starting already to get a little bit scratched, the surface of the ramp. You know, I guess this is just powder coat. You know, it, it can't be helped, but, you know, it's going to get very scratched. I guess maybe it'll need a yearly uh, repowder coating with my mate Adam. <laughs> Adam! I had a lot of comments from people on the floor tiles. Now, these are the garage style um, vented floor tiles. A lot of people saying, you know, if you drop bolts, they're going to disappear through. It's only the very, very smallest of bolts which disappear through. Now, I'm talking really small. Washers can go through. But because I'm working on the bike lift, you know, something drops 99% of the time, it lands on the lift. If something does go through the floor, I can probably find you a washer in here somewhere it's, that has gone through. But you can lift these tiles, you know, you, with a spring puller, you can, you can unclip them and get a corner up. So you can get under these without having to, you know, take everything up. Um, but yeah, there's a few little things falling through. All you need to get them out is a magnet, or if they're really small, magnetise a screwdriver with your magnet and pop, and pop them out. It's as, it's as simple as that, providing, you know, it's a metal thing you've dropped, of course. One of my only comments on the floor is if you're kneeling on it, it is very hard. So it's quite hard to kneel on. So it's worth having just a little pad if you're gonna be kneeling on the floor for an extended period because it's very rigid. Also, you can use side stands on it directly. I've had no damage from side stands. The hexagonal lighting has also been amazing. You know, that kicks out a lot of light. If I'm working on the bikes, you can put that on and you know, you, you've got plenty of visibility, even in the nooks and crannies, there's no shadows. Those lights are superb as workshop lights. I was originally worried at the beginning that they wouldn't be any good as a, as a workshop light. I thought maybe they'd cast funny shadows and stuff, but they're absolutely fine as a workshop light. So if you're thinking of getting some of these hexagonal lights, but are worried about a workshop environment, don't worry. I mean, really, I, I didn't need the other lights. I didn't really need these ones, but these do give a bit of a warmer light for doing sort of video and chats like this. You know, the, the, the hexagonal ones are quite a, quite a harsh light, you know? So uh, I quite like just having these other ones just for normal sort of logs in the garage like this. You may recognize some of these bits up here. <laughs> the Ducati will be going back together soon. As soon as I get all the jobs done on the other bikes, We'll be back and the Ducati restoration will continue. Yeah, there's a back wheel. No garage would be complete without a fridge. <laughs> so I've got a few, uh, few beers and stuff in here, my fridge, a bit of Coke. Oh, but yeah, what garage would be complete without a few refreshments? What I love about this garage is I've, I've managed to get everything put away in the cupboards. You know, I don't have any crap lying around. I mean, I do have a load of boxes which go here, which is the Ducati, which are outside at the moment. But everything has its place, you know, and I'm still, I'm still finding my way around it. But if we open one of these, for instance, all of my, all of my gloves, all of my Knox gloves are at the top there with my boots. You know, I've got some other stuff and bits and bobs. And what is also great about these cupboards, because they're the timbre sort of design, they don't open into the garage. They don't take up space, you know. In this one, we have my trailer. So I've got my motor lug trailer um, in the cupboard as well, in the, one of these cabinets. Cupboards? Cupboards, I suppose you'd call it, wouldn't you? So everything has its place and everything is away, which I absolutely love. In this one, we have, you know, stuff in boxes. <laughs> Screwdrivers, a little box of 
nuts and bolts, you know, Dremels, that sort of stuff. Panniers here, panniers which came off my S1000. And then we've got a Ducati frame and a Ducati fuel tank. So once Ducati's built, you know, I'm going to have more space because a lot of stuff is in here is, uh, is Ducati bits. If I could do one thing differently, it would be not put these sockets here. Originally, there was going to be a worktop here. Before I found this, this unit here, there was going to be just like a, a workbench here. And that's why the sockets were high up. So, you know, they're at working height with the bench. Of course, now... There's no bench there, so if I had to redo it, I'd put the sockets on sort of ground level, so they're floating up in the air a little bit, which is a little bit irritating. Also, this side, when I was designing the electrical layout, there was going to be, I was going to have the big timbre cupboards along here, so I didn't put any power sockets on this side because it was going to be behind the cupboards. And of course, the way things worked out, that didn't happen, so I've actually got no power this side, which is a little bit annoying. Could have done with a socket just on the floor down here, but... You live and learn, you live and learn. Apart from those two things though, I don't think there's anything else I would change with what I've done here, which is amazing really. You know, and you think when I started this, I, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted, it sort of evolved. And I don't think I'd change anything apart from the, the, the power socket placement, you know? I've been really, really incredibly happy with how well this has come out. And there's still plenty of room, even with all my bikes, there's still plenty of room in the garage you know so uh, there's room to walk walk around with the lift here i still have plenty of room there's plenty of room to work and get around this side of the ramp you know because i was a bit worried you know would it be too tight is there going to be room to access as you can see the h2's got the panel off because I'm, I'm also doing a video on repairing the damage on this bike so that'll be coming as well and then the uh, suzuki jobs which are ongoing oh the link pipe's on little clue so there we go that is the garage now i can get on with the jobs i've been wanting to do now i know a lot of people are going to say how much does it cost to build this it's not been cheap i originally budgeted about four thousand um i've overspent i mean things like the cabinets the bike lift you know those are all really expensive items obviously the flooring was quite expensive and the lighting was quite expensive i wanted to do this once and do it right so I've, I've spent more than £4,000 here. Um, obviously, I've done this myself. Me and Womble have done the labour in this garage. Apart from the, apart from the skimming we had done, uh, we've done everything else ourselves, you know, the electrics, the boarding, everything. So we've obviously saved a lot of money by doing it ourselves, but it's still worked out very expensive. So I budgeted £4,000 with all the, uh, you know, the furniture, the lift. You could probably double that is what I've actually spent. I'm telling the missus. Shush, Mavis. Don't you tell Mrs. Jobs, or I'll be strung up. <laughs> What's it worth? <laughs> no, I mean it. Don't, don't tell Mrs. Jobs. So I will shortly be bringing you some garage build maintenance videos. I've got the Suzuki one to come. I've got the H2 repairs, which will follow along soon after. And then, of course, we've got to try and start the ZXR, see if that will run. And then we can get on with the hypermotard in here. So I've got a lot of plans for actual maintenance build videos in this garage. And the way it's come out is just absolutely perfect. So thanks to everyone who's helped me with this garage. Special help, to, special thanks to Womble. I mean, the amount of effort Womble's put in, the amount of days he's been around here helping me do this. I, I couldn't have done it without Womble. I would have had to get someone in, paid someone to do it. I could have probably added another two to three grand to that final bill if that had been the case. So massive thanks to Womble. But it's been absolutely amazing. So, And I hope you've enjoyed watching the series because we've certainly, and I've certainly enjoyed making it. And to have an end result like this, absolutely amazing. So thanks for watching, guys, as always. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.